Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Daniel Lang and today we are talking about how to design and build Alexa into the Colibri with the Chatterbox AVS development board. The webinar today is a guest webinar from our partner Gamsticks. Before we dive into the webinar, a few organizational things. We will have a live question and a session at the end of the webinar. You can already enter your question into the question box in your webinar control panel, even while the webinar is going on. Uh, it's next to the chat box. Uh, please use this field to communicate with us, uh, even also if you have other like, technical issues or you can't hear us anymore and, and so on. So let's start with some introduction. My name is Daniel Lang. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for Toradex and I work here in our office in Seattle. Uh, today's main talk will be done by uh, Gordon Krüber, the CEO and President of Gumsticks. I also like to give you a very short two-minute introduction of Toradex in case you're not familiar uh, with it and so you get a little bit of feeling with who you interface here. A fun fact is that Toradex was founded in 2003, which is actually the same year Gunstick was founded. As you can see here on the map, Toradex is present worldwide. As mentioned earlier, I'm in the office in Seattle, Washington. Headquarters are in Switzerland and we also have a local engineering, sales and support around the world. Also in this, all these offices we have actually a warehouse, so it makes it very easy for you to get the product independent from where you are on the world. We are very specialized on ARM-based system on module or also called computer on modules. Uh, one of our specialities is to have a fully pin compatible module so you can upgrade, downgrade or uh, get a new module. Uh, the hardware and software development is done in-house. Uh, we support Linux and we still do Windows CA. Our uh, software BSPs are optimized and are ready for production. We provide at least 10 years availability on our products. If you buy our product, you get actually free support for it. We have direct sales, uh, so you always directly talk with Toradex and you don't need to deal with distributors in between. As mentioned earlier, we have the global reach, so even if you, for example, have distributed teams in different places in the world, uh, we will be able uh, to support them uh, very simply. And now just a few seconds about the latest products. So the first is our Apollis IMX8 Codmax, which will be available uh, later this year. But we already have an early access program. So if you think that's something for you, you can go on our website on the IMX8 Codmax site and sign up for updates and we will get in touch with you and let you know how you can uh, get into that early access program. But then today we will actually talk about our Colibri uh, module family and here we have an upcoming i.mx8x module uh, which is also pin compatible for example with the imx7 uh, which we use today. Here the same, the module will be available later this year, you can go on our website and sign up and we give you more information. So now let me shortly introduce you to Gumsticks. Uh, one interesting fact is that we have the same age as mentioned. But also Gunsticks did actually pretty much the same thing than Toradex uh, when they started. They did a system on modules. So you could basically say we were a competitor and, and I think we were a competitor in many cases. Uh, what's a little bit different at the beginning was Toradex was focusing on Windows C and Gunsticks did Linux uh, from beginnings. But uh, Toradex later also added Linux uh, as one of our main OS we support. However, in the meantime, Gumsic began to uh, focus more on, on the carrier board and create customized carrier board with a very cool online tool called Chipetto, which basically allows you to use your browser and drag and drop to create your carrier board, uh, for, for example, for Colibri modules. Uh, at the moment, the tools support Colibri IMX6 and the IMX7, uh, which we will use in this webinar. For Toradex, it's great that we can uh, collaborate with Gumsticks and so generate uh, value for our customer. So today we will actually use one of these carrier boards created with that tool and you will see how you can add Alexa functionality to this board. With that, I'd like to give the presentation to Gordon who can give you uh, more information about Gumsticks and then really dig into the details and how to get Alexa running. 
Good morning. Thank you very much, or good evening to those in Europe. Um, thank you very much, Daniel. Yes, as uh, as you said, we were competitors for many years. Uh, Gumsticks, one point in time, decided that our greatest value was in our rapid technology for deploying expansion boards reliably. And we took this automation, which includes not just hardware design, but also hardware production, uh, documentation and software customization for any specific expansion board or compute module and open it up to the world as Geppetto and it's a free online design tool uh, to build uh, custom hardware for either expansion boards or chip down solutions. We'll take a look at that at the end of the uh, presentation at a point where you've got some feel for what Chatterbox can do, which is one specific board that was designed in Geppetto to support Tordex's IMX7 Calibri. To start off, let's dive into what it is that we're going to do with Alexa. First, um, we're going to talk about overall AVS, uh, not just AVS, but ASK, and I'll get into the distinction in a moment, design using Chatterbox. Um, specifically, we'll cover hardware, uh, and that is the Chatterbox at this point, and how to use the Chatterbox plus the Calibri IMX7 in order to build a complete solution. The software, there are uh, three critical components to the software. One is uh, the Alexa Skills Kit. One is the Alexa voice services, and the third are the Linux services that run on our device that support ASK and AVS. And finally, we'll take a look at the customization so that somebody can, uh, at the end of this, have a fair understanding of what is required in order to develop a completely custom Alexa-supported device. There are four steps that we're going to cover. Number one is covering uh, setting up an Alexa skills kit. Um, some of these we will gloss over. We don't have a lot of time. Um, and we will gloss over things like what to do as you create a developer account. But then we'll concentrate a little more on what it is to create a skill. Uh, and then we'll uh, break out of the Alexa skills kit for a moment in order to create an IoT endpoint, which is really what the Chatterbox is. Um, in building a Chatterbox, software, it's important to start with the most recent Calibri operating system, really the most recent U-Boot. So um, mention briefly how to update that. It's important to uh, secure a global address so that wherever this device is, it can function behind a firewall. Uh, we'll use NGROC to do that. We'll create a responder script, which is that portion of the code which functions with the skills kit in order to have the chatterbox perform some function uh, behind a firewall. Then we'll go back to Alexa, this ASK, to complete the skill. And then we'll test the skill without using uh, an AVS device. We'll just test the ASK using the Alexa skills kit test uh, console. Thirdly, we'll set up an Alexa voice services. Um, we'll talk about building and installing AVS device SDK. There are a few ways to do that. Um, we'll talk about uh, building and installing a wake word, and we'll cover briefly how to authenticate the unit, and then we'll go on and do a very brief demo. Um, and then finally, I'll show how to customize with Geppetto. So first, let's talk about the Alexa skills kit. As I mentioned, the, the premise here is that you've gone to Amazon and you've created a, a developer account at Amazon, um, signed up for it. Um, we will dive quickly into understanding what makes up a skill. Um, for those of you who have not played with Alexa yet, um, Alexa skills are those responses or those instructions that one can give to Alexa, to any Alexa device, so an Echo or an Echo Dot. Uh, and this is the back end in the cloud running at Amazon, where one identifies skills, uh, name skills, which include a way to invoke the skills, identifies intents, really uh, functions that can be performed by the targeted device or by Alexa. There are certain skills that can call out to uh, Alexa, call out to other Amazon infrastructure services, and then there are slots. Any intent is covered by slots surrounded by, call them keywords or phrases. And slots you can think of as a parameter. 
the Amazon Skills Kit really acts to use verbal commands or questions, uh, interpret them and parse them into what uh, becomes a JSON request that gets sent, uh, gets posted to uh, some IoT endpoint that can handle the skills. Um, we'll quickly then go through creating a skill, or building the skill, and then finally we'll need to break out of playing or demoing the Alexa Skills Kit console and, and jump to the chatterbox and show what we need to do with the chatterbox to create the endpoint for it. So first off, this is uh, after when you sign into the developer, you're given a choice of either going to the Alexa Skills Kit or to the Alexa Voice Service in order to get started. Uh, what we're going to do here is get started with the Alexa Skills Kit first, as discussed. And after we get started, we end up going through some sign-up procedures in order to get to creating an uh, interaction model where we, uh, at some point, decide what a skill invocation name is going to be. And what we have used is my chatterbox. Uh, something that we discovered in testing is, uh, in our own systems, is if we use two-syllable words, there are too many other words that get confused that are part of, uh, or general usage in asking, for example, for the weather. But by coming up with three defined syllables it worked much better and so we just use my chatterbox so what we would end up saying is something along the lines of ask my chatterbox to do something if you look at this panel on the left here you see that it's the interaction model we've described first in order to get to this invocation point we described an intent and we'll go on to the next point and discuss uh, our intent. I just called it an instruction or instruct is our intent. There are certain built-in intents that come with Alexa. And then after we describe our intent, we won't get into what the actions, uh, what the slot types are other than to describe that you can see here, we've got an action, uh, a line number and an LED. So let's dive in to see what a, what the intent is. Looking at, after adding, what I did was I clicked here and I added uh, an intent that I've named instruct. And so intent instruct, this instruct here, this name is what this is here. I've given it three different ways in which somebody could um, provide a, here we go, a sample utterance. So for example, um, I've defined an action and the actions that I defined are either the words toggle the, um, and then LED color. So it's toggle the red light, for example. Um, and what I've defined it here are two, either LED color is a, is pulled from an Amazon color, which is a predefined slot type. So LED color here is slot type Amazon color. Line number here is an Amazon number. And then action is something that is a custom defined action and I have not put a slide here for it, but in effect, it's name uh, what we would define as an action. So it's either set, clear, or toggle. So in this case, somebody could uh, set the red light, toggle the red light, set red, toggle red, clear red, or set, and then use the word port, and then with a line number. So somebody could say clear port 34. At that point, Moving on, we can cover the interfaces or uh, jump to the endpoint. And what we're going to have to do here is um, save the model and then move on. So, and what we're doing now is we're jumping over, we're leaving the Alexa Skills Kit behind. And what we're going to do is start working with our Calibri. We're going to do um, three things specifically with the Calibri in order to build it into an IoT thing. Internet of Things thing that responds to commands from the Alexa Skills Kit. First, we're going to have to quickly configure the Calibri. Daniel, could you say uh, one or two words about what it is to use the Toradex Easy Installer in order to bring it up to date? Um, yes, so the Easy Installer is a new pre-installed uh, software for our uh, models. So everybody who, who gets a, a new module uh, gets this Toradex Easy Installer and it allows you basically with one click to get the latest uh, OS and food loader so the system will go to our server and download the, the, the latest and you even have choice to get uh, pre-releases 
and we are now working on enabling uh, many of our uh, partner demos to be available as product easy installer uh, demo. So something pretty cool. So if you were on embedded world, so all the partner demos, most of them will be available uh, as Torrex Ease Installer package. Also Torrex Ease Installer is a very nice tool for volume production. So it has a lot of uh, features which are useful for if you do your own uh, volume production and programming. Great. And thank you. And the key thing for us is since individuals are likely to be putting a lot of software on here, as well as likely to be uh, booting from a micro SD card instead of the software that comes pre-distributed from Tordex, it's critical to have the most up-to-date U-boot or bootloader so that it's critical to have the most up-to-date U-boot bootloader. So that's first. The second is uh, how to is, is to boot We're using the micro SD card using an image that you can grab from uh, gumsticks.com. And then finally, there are lots of ways, and as I'm sure you all recognize, to build a web server. What I've done here is is a little, uh, perhaps a little to throw and put a, an Apache server on here running PHP as a CGI. So there are other really good, more lightweight systems for those of you who prefer programming in Python. Of course, uh, there's a, a great Flask, and uh, there's a Flask-ask module that you can do a pip install Flask-ask. And in my case, I decided to use Apache. Then we'll do a, a responder script. I'll, I'll walk quickly through the, the highlights of the script that uh, we've got running on uh, in the demo. Then uh, we need to add the endpoint and build, go back and build the skill at AVS using the end grok that we're going to i'll walk you through how to fill in at amazon uh the the number that you get from end grok in order to go go forward here so first things is the script highlights simple housekeeping not all gpios may be exposed uh, in the root file system as toggleable by the script and so the uh, first thing i do in order to get things going is to run a quick bash script the way in which control, we'll see shortly, control the GPIOs is by opening them as a, uh, with a file handle um, and in the sysclass GPIO construct. So um, the first thing that I do is get the, make sure that all the LEDs are enabled. Um, I, the, the distro has um, for 33, 34, 48, and uh, 48 all uh, set up for export. These all control different LEDs, um, but 49 isn't. Uh, 49 is a green LED, and so I export that at the beginning and then um, uh, make sure that the permissions are correct. Um, and then I um, start up Apache. Um, the Apache uh, runs PHP as a CGI. Um, in um, was it user share Apache CGI bin um, as index.php. So the first thing we do is we grab the header and PHP HP makes that easy to uh, grab as file get contents from standard in. Uh, and then there's a, J a JSON decode, um, which I can then find uh, exactly what was passed by Apache ASK using these um, uh, object parameters. So, uh, and when we take a look at the test, we'll have a, a quick, which I'm not sure that came in, but we can take a look. There is a way to examine exactly the structure of the JSON requests from the Amazon uh, console that makes it easy to debug whether or not you've uh, uh, called out values and, and um, keys correctly. So we grab the header first, um, then we we do our action, and this is simply um, switch on action to, you know, in a, I, I've eliminated, snipped out, you know, the other set value and clear value for for the LEDs. Um, but we open sysclass GPIO. GPIO pin is something that uh, I've uh, uh, figured out from both value and color, but cleaned up to make sure that it's uh, states of GPIO and then digit digit 
only for values that are um, exp only for these particular values three, three, four, eight, nine, um, and then open it for appending, and then a switch on the whatever the action was that was sent to me. Uh, in this case, the example is toggle response text. So this is something that gets sent back to Alexa for Alexa to uh, utter to uh, whoever uh, made the question. Um, and then we just I toggle six times. Uh, uh, so the light goes on and off uh, three times. Um, and then I close the handle. Um, and then after I've done the actions that were requested by Alexa, I, Alexa, I send back a, uh, a response. This is the response that indicates uh, that it was done. And you can see here my response is out, output speech. And I'm sending text response text. Um, and then uh, at the end, I issue the response uh, encoded in JSON again, um, content length. Uh, I need to include a header, uh, the break after the header, and then the response, and then I flush it. Um, the, uh, I, I was never quite able to debug how the JSON um, so, sorry, how the uh, headers were properly controlled. Uh, and the, the, the key to get this working for me was actually to send it back as HTTP 1.0 instead of 1.1 so, so that this was not sent back as a keep alive session. Um, <clears throat> um, that's it. This is the, so this is really the meat of getting the chatterbox to do something when Alexa asks and then subsequently tell Alexa what to say. Um, after it's done. Um, the next thing, now that they, so just take as given at this point that um, we have started up Apache and this is running as index.php on the chatterbox behind a firewall. We now need to instruct the Alexa skills console how to send uh, uh, a, a request, an instruction or a request or a skill to the, this endpoint. And so what we do is take advantage of something called ngroc. Um, and uh, it, 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 this sets up a tunnel from, well, it sets up a, 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 an HTTPS tunnel um, that is available that you can publish back to Alexa. And so first things first, download ngroc. And, and in this case, um, Download and install the uh, zipped zipped arm um, uh, binary and and uh, put it in your put whatever file you're going to run it in. And what we do, um, uh, trying to think, there was one glitch. The uh, we we have not got the unzip working cleanly, and so um, something to remember is to download it to host and then SCP it up to in SCP the unzipped um, binary onto your uh, uh, target chatterbox, uh, and then once they're um, or w once you're logged in to your account at ngrok, um, you need to uh, run ngrok, get an authorization token, and then you can. Um, pound this into the chatterbox uh, in order to get it up and running, um, and then uh, in order to start the start your first tunnel. Um, in fact, uh, to start every tunnel, every time you instantiate uh, or every time you you boot up again, you need to start a new ngrok and then copy the uh, the uh, new uh, uh, public secure address over. So ngrok HTTP 80, um, let's go to the next page. And, and um, what that will do is it will set up this in a session um, and it will provide you with HTTPS. And then a, um, you can see in the right here, it provides a, a forwarding address that you can then post directly into the endpoint page. Right here we are back at the Alexa skills console in endpoint, you can publish. Uh, so you you provided the um, HTTPS access here. Uh, then you need to save it and then build it. Um, once all that's and it takes a couple minutes to build the uh, Alexa 
uh, skill uh, and have it deployed, uh, something will pop up. <clears throat> um, and then once it's built, it'll, it'll, it'll pop up a message saying that it's built successfully. Uh, once it's built, we can go into a test mode right here, which allows you to test the skill. Um, and here we get a good example of, so this is an image of the chatterbox right here that we've got. Um, there's a, on the, on the test page, after you've built it, uh, built the skill on the test, test tab here, um, you're able to either hold down the microphone and speak to this. You don't use a wake word or you don't need to use a wake word. Um, hold this down and uh, either ask it directly into your microphone on the host, uh, not on the chatterbox, on the host. Um, and what you can say is ask my chatterbox to set the red light. Um, and this is what we did here. Uh, and you can see that it uh, sent, this is the JSON that it sent out. Remember, um, there, there's, you know, further down here, down here, there is a the request and the uh, um, JSON structure that you saw gets posted to headers that we interpreted from the standard in, uh, and this is the uh, this is the returned from the chatterbox. Um, if you're having difficulty uh, actually talking to it and getting uh, read, you can you can type it in here and make sure that you test a number of. Uh, alternatives. Okay, step three. Um, uh, step three is the Alexa voice services. Um, and what we're going to talk about here is running the SDK. Um, what we've done in here is uh, built a standard AVS demo app. Um, and uh, we, we, we built it um, from the instructions at AVS. Um, there, it, it is not for the faint of heart. Um, you know, you need to know how to build and compile. Um, so build and make. Um, and many headers need tweaking um, and allow yourself two days, possibly three days of slogging through building it from scratch. Uh, <clears throat> the instructions are very good and easy to follow, um, but it takes time. Um, what we have got um, is uh, we, in fact, we will, we will have a downloadable version that's part of our setup kit. Um, that does not include the wake word feature, uh, but it will be uh, available to get going. Um, so to build this with wake word, you need to, um, uh, there, there are two available wake word uh, technologies that are uh, designed on both Alexa and the company's side. One is from a company called Sensory, which is the one that we've demoed here, and the other is some, from a company called Kit.ai, um, and those need to be managed separately as they are separate. Uh, it's separate code from Alexa. Um, we plan in the next um, couple weeks to have available a Yocto uh, repo for the uh, AVS device SDK to make this a, a simple, smart install. It is not, it's not uh, supported in Yocto at this point. Um, and then finally, uh, you need to go to uh, the AVS console and, uh, and get a, um, a secret key pair. Um, I'll go through a couple pieces of, of uh, important point at that. Remember at the beginning there were there were two tabs to get started on. One was uh, skills kit and the other is voice services. Now you uh, get started with the voice services and you need to input what the device is that you're building. Um, here we cover the uh, AVS device SDK into your source, source folder. It's, it's um, available at GitHub. Uh, and again, the instructions are available uh, for building it locally on your 
uh, on your Calibri uh, chatterbox. Um, the critical thing is really getting the secret key pair uh, done. You can see that when you get to the Alexa voice services page, um, th there is one product identification page where you need to put in product information. Um, you will be assigned secure keys and codes. Um, and then the security profile you need to, uh, in this case, what we've done is a chatter demo profile demonstrating the chatterbox. Um, it'll provide a profile ID, which we've uh, obfuscated, actually blanked out here and obfuscate, obfuscated here. We ended up getting a client ID in secret, which need to be um, uh, loaded back onto the chatterbox. And then um, right down here, it's important to identify allowed origins and allowed return URLs for the first time you boot this so that you can go through this authentication. Um, and this is, yes, your local IP address. Okay, now quickly, um, uh, we've got a very simple demo showing this, you know, this um, long process finally coming to fruition in something very simple. Here we go. Alexa, tell my chatterbox to set the red light. Okay. I turned it on. Alexa, tell my chatterbox to clear port 34. Okay, I turned it off. Alexa, tell my chatterbox to toggle the blue light. Were you watching? That's it. A lot of work for that simple demo. Um, but you, if we jump back to the uh, script highlights, um, I, I included this one particular piece. It toggled it, uh, and were you watching as how it was the message that got sent back. So last um, here, what I'd like to do is um, do a quick demo of you know what to do with Chatterbox. What we showed was a, a simple uh, Chatterbox is a nice simple. Um, system which provides a USB host, Ethernet, uh, wireless speaker, uh, et cetera, to, uh, to do a demonstration on it with some buttons and whistles. Um, but it's very likely that you, you would want to um, include additional functionality in anything you, went, you took to, to uh, production. So um, in this case, uh, what we're going to do is um, do a quick jump from uh, what we quick jump to the actual source Geppetto uh, documents um, and make some customizations in Geppetto. Just to highlight what Geppetto is, Geppetto is a free online design tool that ends up delivering to you production board, production quality boards in uh, three weeks. It includes not just the hardware that gets delivered, but documentation and a board support package. Um, it, it gets it ready for truly ready for you to um, uh, take it to production. So what we're going to do here is um, I'm going to click on this, and this is going to bring up another window. Um, okay. So now we're taking a look at the window that just popped up when I clicked the, uh, the link there. I'm going to grow it, open. Okay, so this is this is the chatterbox, and if we click on our 3D view button up here, we can see that um, this is the same uh, device. Uh, the value, zoom in, I'm gonna zoom out. Um, if we look at this, we see a workspace right here. We see a, a collection of modules and functions that are on the right here, and we've got. Um, uh, tools along the top. So I'm going to uh, make one simple change here. I'm going to say that we've decided that we don't actually want to have wi wireless. Imagine that. We're not going to put wireless on. So I'm going to delete that module and say that instead of having wireless on there, what I'm going to do is add some sensors. Um, I will put a, this is an internet of things, so I'm going to put a, uh, a barometer on there. And I'm going to say I want that to be on an I2C bus. I'll put it on I2C2. Um, and let's see 
we would like a uh, passive infrared motion sensor thrown on here as well. So I'm going to click that around so that it's looking in the right direction. I need an output. I'm going to send the output on GPIO, and then I need 3.3 .3 volts. I actually dropped that. Let's see. Temperature sensor. Here we go. I2C. An alert. There we go. So we've got now a barometer and a temperature sensor on here. Uh, I'm going to save it as Calibri IMX7 changed. And as soon as I do, it'll give me a chance to show you that there are those two new modules that we put on. I'm going to save it. And up here, I can click on this auto dock button and it'll download documentation for me. And I'm going to need to um, hold on just a moment here. Uh, I'm trying to uh, set this up so I'm showing the right screen. Back to preview. So here's the uh, documentation that we provide automatically, and it's available for anybody to take a look at uh, freely. So this is included as part of the free services. Um, so in, in fact, you can imagine that somebody could, in fact, input a design and end up with this customized uh, even without ordering the product. And it includes a, demo, a list of what modules on board. But the really key thing is to identify um, all the different connections that are in the system. And you can see here that it identifies everything. And then jumping way down to the end, we see that it constructed a, um, a module graph that highlights that the Toradex connector goes to the temperature sensor and the barometer. Those are what we just added in. And then here's the power graph to understand how much power is being used and drawn by the system. So that that is of some, uh, some value to people uh, uh, designing a system. The other great uh, value is um, this piece here called the Auto BSP, which provides an automatically downloaded board support package for this. Uh, and again, this is on another um, file. So I'm uh, going to bring that up separately. OK, so in my folder, you can see this was the download. And we've got a Calibri IMX7. And it's a, a boot sector device tree and then a readme that tells you exactly how to do uh, to make use of this, um, oh, the README you don't see, sorry. Um, so there's a README that describes how to do this, but also um, it provides the UN that goes in at, at the device tree, and then the down, you're able to download the, uh, the uh, uh, Yocto image directly from, uh, from gumsticks.com. Um, okay. And I think that's it. Um, I uh, forget the really critical point, and that is that uh, once you've designed this, um, you know that you can uh, download uh, for a hundred and so it's a two thousand dollar manufacturing fee, um, and it'll be one hundred and three dollars and seventy three cents per unit, and we'll ship it to you on April eleventh, completely functioning, um, and in volumes, uh, you know, it gets down to ninety dollars, and that's with all this functionality that. Uh, Toradex Calibri is sold separately. Daniel, thank you very much for letting me uh, highlight the uh, system here, not just the Alexa, but to, to jump into Geppetto as well. Yeah, thanks a lot. I think that's uh, quite interesting, especially for people familiar with uh, system on module. You know, you have to do the carrier board, and I think that's a very uh, simple way to do uh, carrier board. So yeah, now we are open for questions. So um, feel free to type this again in, in the question box uh, in your in your chat window, and I will pick them up and um, try uh, to answer it. Or um, Gordon is, is answering this. Um, so the first question is: So is it possible to buy the chat box off the shelf? So I think you showed that you can customize it and you showed the, 
uh, the fees like uh, 2000 and then per piece. But if somebody is okay with the off-the-shelf chatter box, is, is it also possible to, to buy that? Or do you have other uh, boards which work with uh, Torrenex modules you can buy off-the-shelf? Yes, let me just jump to um, Tordex. So the, the Tordex boards that we support are now on the screen. Um, we've got an IMX6 development kit, uh, uh, a development board on its own, and then the, uh, the Chatterbox is off the shelf available for $140, yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, let me reach you next. Cause... There is a link in the, uh, I understand, in our uh, chat box here that uh, highlights the Tordex, what is it, Tordex Chatterbox design. I'm looking for the headline on it. Chat on yeah, so the product page. Yeah. Yes. So if you look at the chat box, you, you can find uh, most of the links we were uh, talking uh, in, in the webinar. And then, I mean, we had several questions. Is this webinar recorded? Um, yes, it's recorded, and we will provide you the link. Uh, to the webinar download in an email a few days after uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, is Cepetto a BCB tool? Um, a BCB, what does that mean? Yeah, it brings circuit boards to oh, PCB sorry, tool. My Swiss, PCB. sorry, my no, Swiss accent here. <laughs> it, it is a fully integrated system design tool, not just PCB. Okay. So we, we end up producing custom circuit boards yes but you don't get a pcb out of this you get a fully integrated assembled system is it possible to import the output of Chepetto in other uh, tool uh right now no it is not uh when you say the output the output of Chepetto is actually we ship the boards uh the the auto dock is a pdf so that's usable as instructions the um, auto bsp supports um uh, it, you know runs on the device so you know some of the output is but we don't uh export for example gerbers or bills of materials uh as a part of our standard process okay thank you and the hot word detection, is it running on the main core or on the M4 core of Dynamics 7? The, the, way, the way we compiled this demo code uh, is uh, on the main core, not on the real-time core. Also, maybe here a comment from my side for uh, the, the people not too familiar with the IMX7. So the IMX7 is actually a heterogeneous multi-core. So you have the main core, which is a Corpex A7, or even dual core A7. And then you have an extra core, an M4 core, where you can use for, uh, for example, a real-time task. Uh, we have a nice demo with, uh, with a robot, uh, yeah, yeah, you may uh, so, or it could also be used for low uh, power tasks, so in IoT, so you could, for example, switch off the main core and then detect sensors uh, with that M4 and then react if something happened. And I guess that would also be possible with for key uh, hardware detection, but it's not implemented. Okay, here are kind of similar question than before. If the schematics are available, uh, if taken through a preliminary production run. So I, I guess if somebody really did the boards and everything and then want to ramp up, uh, can they get the schematics? Um, so I, I guess what doesn't come across is that we do ramp up with Geppetto. So Geppetto is a production tool. It is, it's excellent for prototyping, but the whole point is to go to production using Geppetto. Um, what we've shown are pricing in small lots. Uh, you know, there are quotation processes to go through for optimization, optimization for large volume production. So, you know, that's not something that's available on a 15 day spin, but when our customers end up in production, we do offer, uh, you know, production level pricing. Okay. okay, thanks. And then here two uh, similar questions from two different people. Is there a directional microphone array 
and how many microphones can can be supported? Uh, not yet. There will be. Not yet, though. Okay. So for the moment, there is one uh, one microphone, but it can be sorry, it's trying to be extended in the future. Yes. Same question: Will an IMX8 mini platform coming soon? Uh, so maybe I take that. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are three main line of IMX8. So there is the IMX Codmax, uh, which we uh, which I showed on the on the first slide, which is a very high performance uh, system with uh, two A72, four A53, M2, M4s, and a big GPU. And then there is the IMX 8M, which is currently uh, available too, but Torex doesn't did not do that model yet. So we're considering that for later, but we were not in early access. We were in early access for the IMX 8 called Max and the X. And the IMX 8 Mini uh, would be a variation of that IMX 8M. And, but honestly, I don't think that's going to be available from anybody uh, very soon. So IMX 8M, uh, there are solutions not from Torlex for the moment. Uh, and 8 and mini, I think you have to wait a little bit. And what we do with Torlex is the IMX 8X, which will be in the color reform factor, and that will be uh, available uh, this year. So I think that could be uh, very interesting. This features up to four Cortex A35, so very power efficient 64 bit. Okay, so uh, somebody, it's not really a question, but so, somebody maybe wants to work uh, uh, with you uh, to integrate a microphone array uh, to, to that and, and maybe combine that with, uh, uh, with a carrier wall from Chepetto. I think that's interesting. Uh, just write the, yeah, so just write the email uh, to me uh, or uh, to Gordon, actually, we didn't. Uh, share the email address and my one is very simple daniel dot lang at torrex dot com which i also put it in the, in the chat box and i am gordon g o r d o n at gumsticks dot com um, uh, about keywords is there a limitation on keyword or yeah so probably can i use any keyword or, or do they need to be careful or, or what's the uh, what's the recommendation <laughs> So that is something that gets encoded in this either the sensory or kit uh, software, and I'm I recall that one of them has a broad range in the demo, the other has a limited range in the demo, and I've forgotten which is which. Okay, but there are there, okay. there are more keywords than just Alexa available. That fundamentally yes, uh, but I'm not sure that uh, it, it's not something that we've probed at all. Okay, so would you know if I can have my own company, company XY, as a keyword? Uh, yeah, so I think that's available, but I don't know w whether it's kit or sensory that provides that. And, and we, okay. we, can, we can find that out. Okay, yeah, maybe short from, from my, my side, I know a little bit kit.ai, and I think they have a crowdsourcing way to create keywords, so you, you can create your own one. And then, I mean, it's a deep you know, network behind, so you have to train it. So you have to say it uh, many times. And if you only say it yourself, uh, it will work very well if you say it. But if you ship it to the customer and it maybe has another accent or a very deep voice or high voice or, or say it's a little bit strange, it may doesn't work so well. So there you can actually go on their website and select words and just say it and then you also see different uh, hot words or keywords or, or wake words however you want to call that uh, how well they train or how many samples they have and of course as more people use a word as more robust does, does it get uh, yeah, but that's just from one, one company yeah uh, is there a cost using abs no uh, Good, simple, good question. <laughs> Always like to get that if so, if so, something is uh, free. Um, good. Let me check again. I get everything. Okay. I think I'm more or less through. Uh, otherwise, maybe repost it. Uh, and I think we will wait a few seconds. 
in case anybody else has a question. Uh, otherwise, uh, you have our emails. Um, and you can call up Toralex in, in any offices or you can call up uh, GOM6 if you have more questions uh, about this. And as mentioned, the, the webinar will be available. Links uh, we showed uh, will also be available so you can easily get actually that and reproduce it uh, for yourself if you like. Great. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking down a list of questions here that um, I've got. Um, Wakeworg, how can we integrate our own source code to other tasks? Um, I think we showed how to integrate source code in the script um, that I showed online. It's it's uh, completely programmable and and something can be done on command from Alexa or in the background in, as any other process. Uh, next question was, do we sell boards as an OEM? Both Tordex and Gumsticks sell uh, our boards to OEMs for use in their products. That is each of our core businesses. Do we offer additional service such as flashing own Yocto built image? Yes, absolutely. Um, do we offer fulfillment to end customers? Y yes, absolutely. As you can see, the uh, Chatterbox product page at uh, Gumsticks, for example. And we do handle order returns. Um, this is, you know, Tordex and Gumsticks have each been in business for, uh, well, we're in our 15th year now. So it's uh, it's a long time and, and we have handled uh, all aspects of the supply chain um, for industrial customers. Product packaging, uh, we do have uh, a partner, Protocase, um, that does handle uh, product packaging. More often than not, uh, our customers uh, are working with a design firm and end up tooling their own systems. And that covers it. Those, those are all the questions that I'd had. Okay, very good. So um, let's see, I didn't get any more in the meantime. So I think with that, uh, we conclude that webinar. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for joining us and uh, check also out our other webinars. We have uh, coming up one with uh, Sierra Wireless uh, about this goes direction IoT, how to connect your uh, board with uh, LTE and, and, and uh, to, the, to the internet. And then we have other one coming up soon. I think it's not even on our website yet. It's about industrial automation uh, with MV Tech, uh, so camera, uh, vision, and, and how you can use our models for, for industrial automation. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, of all, and have a good day, evening, uh, morning. Thank you. <laughs> and Daniel, Bye. thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.